This will be your desk. What do I do for privacy? Go home at night. Who has the desk facing me? Joe Tucker. Good luck. You'll need it. Joe Tucker. Isn't he that nasty, bitter man who writes the mainline Chicago column? Yes, I am. You're Joe Tucker? Yeah. I don't really like being called bitter. I prefer macho. So, you're going to be doing the helpline, solving the problems of Chicagoland's great unwashed. You're not going to keep little stuffed Care Bears on your desk, are you? Only doing this until something better comes along. Like a job in a limestone quarry. Cigarette? No, thank you. I don't smoke. Oh, you might as well. You're going to die sitting across from me. Ed LaSalle. Hi, Mary Brenner. Ed LaSalle. Mary Brenner. Just wanted to welcome you aboard, Mary Brenner. Oh, thanks. I've lived in Chicago my whole life. The first city. The Windy City, the Big Shoulders, Hog Butcher to the World, Chi Town, my town. You're gonna love it here. I'm from here. <laughs> Ed LaSalle. Uh, the theater critic. Ah, yes, of course. You like theater, Mary Brenner? Yes, yes, I do. There's a lot of great theater in this town. Mm. Did you like cats? Never saw it. <laughs> Dreamgirls. Oh, no, 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 no. That's all commercial pap, Mary Brenner. <laughs> I cover the real theater. Chicago's theater. Daring, experimental, the raw side of life. Emotions stripped bare. The refuse of the human condition. You know what's the worst part about being a critic, Mary Brenner? Musicals? No. <laughs> Most nights I have no one to accompany me. Are you married? Yes. How come you're not wearing a wedding band, Mary Brenner? Uh, well, I'm not, you know, technically married, so... Uh, then it's the big D? Yes. <laughs> That's good. Well, it looks like you're gonna be stepping out with Ed LaSalle. Maybe, we'll certainly see. Stepping out with Ed LaSalle. Stepping out. That's the name of his column. Thank you. <laughs> A very clever name, too. Well, thank you. If you need any help in naming your column, you know I'll where to come. know where to come. <laughs> I don't suppose I could ask you... Not if it would end world hunger. <laughs> I like to smoke. You see, by nature, I'm a very private person. I don't like people or things much, so I keep to myself. It's a rather dull existence. It sort of gives me a chance to live life on the edge. You ever tried cyclamates? <laughs> Good. You're showing me something. Mr. Tully, I don't seem to have any pins. Um, could you tell me where supplies would be? You're the new person, right? Yes. This way. When we get to the big cabinet, stop me. <laughs> Joe? Is Frank around? Yeah, he's upstairs. Oh. Who you got there? Murderer. Wanted to turn himself in to us first. Timmy, I'm going to get my editor. Be back in a minute. Who'd you kill? My cable TV repairman. He kept coming out and coming out. He never got a clear picture on Channel 2. <laughs> so what do you do here? Oh, well, I just started. I'm going to run the helpline column, solving readers' problems, that sort of thing. Really? Maybe you could help me. <laughs> well, you'd be my first. I'm going to be going away for a while very soon. <laughs> could you call South Shore Cable TV, return this channel selector box, and get my deposit back? I can't get to those people no matter what I do. Oh, I know. That is really infuriating. Don't you know it. So, you're the fellow who kills cable repairmen. <laughs> what, what, what did you say? 
Tim Flowers. I wanted to make my statement to you before I turned myself into the cops. You came to the right place. Oh, Inks, did you say that, that he killed somebody? <laughs> he said it was my TV. I know it wasn't my TV. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so, Tim, what's the story? What about my compensation? I've got a sister in Roanoke I support. Five hundred dollars. For a murder? A thousand. Uh, could you maybe discuss this somewhere Five hundred by going rate. You're the helpline reporter. Are you going to let him get away with this? It's my first day. Eight hundred. Mary Brenner, I found that perfect play for us tonight. Five fifty. The Transfiguration of Benno Blimpe. No. Search yourself. It's about a fat man so disgusted with life that he literally eats himself to death. Oh, uh, no. Dad, I don't... Not tonight. There'll be a buffet after. <laughs> that beat it. You guys mind? Six hundred. You're trying to rip me off. Mary, call the police. Don't, don't you dare. Um, Frank? Mary, you're working for me. I'm not joking around here. Please give him the money. Six fifty. Okay, you got a deal. <laughs> All right. How'd you kill him? I hit him over the head with that. Excuse me. repairman never showed up. <laughs> oh, come on, Mary, laugh it off. I don't deserve this, Susan. I've worked hard to get where I am, you know? I mean, I give to all the telephones. I should not have to work side by side with felons. <laughs> Mary, we've been neighbors now for what? Three, four years. Uh, How many times have you always been there for me? Let me try to help you. Oh, would you please? I could use some advice. Of course, it might not have a lot of credence, considering how I run my life. Most of the time, I feel so scattered and confused. That's not good for a city planner. You do fine. <laughs> no, I wouldn't listen to me the way I always seem to foul everything up you I wanna do. You want to try, Susan? Just, you know, give me something you know, here. <laughs> You know, this is funny, because if I were you, I'd be coming to you for a Susan! Would... Okay, okay. Well, it's easy, I guess. You gotta stick it out at that place. I mean, what's wrong with shaking things up a little bit? You know, your life was too comfortable anyway, Mary. Mm -hmm. You need the adventure. What have you got to lose? Not much, really. And that job does seem worthwhile. Okay, thanks. Not half bad. Well, I told you I could help. Yeah, well, you got your quirks, but when push comes to shove, your head is on pretty straight. Oh, God, I hope so, because I met a guy yesterday and I'm getting married. <laughs> His name is Les. What? Mary, I feel like I've known him all my life. You're serious? Yes. And again, I have you to thank. Me? Remember the other day when you told me my problem with man was that I was too desperate to get married and the minute I stopped pushing, the right guy would come along? Well, son of a gun, he did. Well, that's less. He must be finished unpacking. Susan, he's moving in already. Well, just till our new house clears escrow. How you doing? I missed you. Hi. Mary Brenner. <laughs> this is Lester Mintz. Hello. I just know the three of us are going to be so close. Well, how much you pay for this place, Mary? Glad. I'm oh, sorry. I know Susan came here to help you with some kind of personal problem. Honey, you help Mary out. I'll, I'll just browse. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Some women go a whole lifetime without meeting a man like that. <laughs> Les, what do you do for a living? Oh, uh, I'm in business, Mary. Oh? What kind of business? Well, you know, investments. Large firm? <laughs> yeah. You might say that. You, uh, from Chicago? No, no, no. I'm from Vegas. I'm bothering you. I'll just look around the bedroom. <laughs> what exactly does he do? Not sure, but he likes kids and long walks along the lake and me. What more do I need to know? Has he ever testified before a Senate subcommittee? <laughs> Who is it? 
Frank DeMarco. That's my new managing editor. What? Hi, Mary. Hi. Everything all right? Well, that's what I want to know. You ran out. I was wondering if you're okay. Yes, I'm fine. Frank, I didn't fill out an application. How did you know where I live? I had one of my interns follow you home. Hi, I'm Frank DeMarco. Susan Wilcox. I'm getting married. It's about time. <laughs> Who's this? Oh, this is Mary's new managing editor. Mr. Nice Miss, how you doing? Frank DeMarco. Keep this job at all costs. Everything is fine between you two. We should be moving along. Let's go, love machine. Mm. Well, Mary, I hope you don't mind. I washed my hands with those little soaps in your bathroom. Terrific. <laughs> Mary, I'm a guy who plays hunches, and I have a hunch you're going to work out. I just want to tell you to hang in there. Things will get easier. Not much, but a little. Well, thank you, Frank. To tell you the truth, I can use all the encouragement I can get. No problem. You want me to stay the night? <laughs> what? Okay, fine. I'll see you tomorrow. How could you ask me that? It's easy. I ask everyone this. Oh. Oh, I see. You only hired me because you thought I was nice looking and you might be able to work something out. You don't think I'm capable. You didn't think I could do that job for one minute. You were just trying to work a little action. Yeah, that's right. I don't believe you. You don't? No, 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 no. I see you work. <laughs> You're just throwing me a curve. You want to know if I really am tough, so you put me in an embarrassing situation to see how I'll handle it. <laughs> you got me, Mary. I was testing no, you. No, you weren't. I wasn't. No, I think you really did just want to spend the night with me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Mixed messages. I thought you wanted to spend the night with me. Oh, how did you think that? Why else would you take a job you know you can't handle? Uh -huh. So I was right, you don't think I can do the job. Uh, no, no, uh, no. Actually, I never gave it much thought. I was only interested in sleeping with you. Get out. So I guess I won't see you tomorrow. You're damn right you'll see me tomorrow, nine o'clock, and I will show you a thing or two. Mary, you just passed the test with flying colors. Get out. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you know where Frank DeMarco is? He's not in his office. Oh, well, he's probably not in yet. I had an appointment with him yesterday, but I got arrested. <laughs> well, then you're the... No, okay. I'm not going to say that. The first time I came in here, I was accused of something, so I would be the last to call you I'm a... the hooker. <laughs> and a fine one you are, I'm sure. Um, but just make yourself comfortable. Thanks. There's a soda machine over there. Uh, if you hang around it, maybe someone will buy you a drink. <laughs> Helpline. First phone responses to your announcement. Mm. These are supply receipts. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I can't be fired, you know. Right. right. <laughs> All these this morning? Uh, the mail comes in about three. <gasps> oh. My landlord turned off my heat. My wife needs 24-hour nursing. Medicare won't cover. The Army owes me retirement pay. Can't get in touch with it. Well, there certainly is no lack of need for this, is there? That's right, Mary. A lot of people out there with nowhere to turn. <laughs> think you're up to it? Yes, I think so, Frank. Good. Start with this one. My next-door neighbor is a werewolf. Help. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, Mary. Full moon. I want it in the paper tomorrow. Oh, no, Frank, Frank, wait a minute. I mean, these others seem so much You have more. a lot to learn about attracting readers, Mary. But Fra what about credibility? Remember you said you had an obligation to... We have to crawl before we walk. Frank, I didn't come here to do things your way. Ed LaSalle. <laughs>